That's Kurt Warner, a second year player out of Northern Iowa. And this place has gotten very quiet. That's Kurt Warner making his debut for the Rams in 1999. And this is Kurt Warner receiving his Super Bowl MVP just five months later. Warner, an unbelievable story, Happy ends ending. like this. He just completed, in my estimation, the greatest season ever of a quarterback. The happy ending to Kurt Warner's story is widely known, but the journey he took to win the Super Bowl as a rookie is perhaps the greatest underdog tale in the history of sports. And that might get lost in some people with it being decades in the past. To learn about that, we have to go back further than the 1999 season, back when he was stocking shelves or playing pro football just miles away from the red light district. If you didn't already know about Kurt Warner's pathway to glory, you're in for a treat. Let me lay it out for you in five minutes or less and while you're here, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's go back to where it all began, in his home state of Iowa. Warner played college at University of Northern Iowa, where he didn't get a lot of attention. His first three years were mainly spent on the bench, but he started showing signs of skill in his senior year after he became a starter. He won the Gateway Football Conference Offensive Player of the Year, throwing 19 touchdowns in 12 games. Big deal, right? Not really. Without any surprise, Warner went undrafted in 1994. He tried out for the Green Bay Packers, but didn't even make it out of preseason since some guy named Brett Favre sat higher up the pecking order. It was at this point where Warner needed to make a big career decision. He knew he was good enough to make it as a pro quarterback, but he needed the money to support his family. The Iowa native had no choice but to take an overnight job as a shelf stalker at a grocery store in Cedar Falls, while earning no more than $5.50 an hour. To keep his head locked into football, he also returned to Northern Iowa as an assistant coach, all while attempting to try out with an NFL team. Unfortunately for Warner, that chance never came to his doorstep. Following a long year of grueling hours between minimum wage work and coaching from the sidelines, he turned his attention to the unfamiliar Arena Football League, signing a two-year contract with the Iowa Barnstormers, and he made the most of it by leading the team to a finals appearance in both seasons that he played. The two seasons in the AFL gave Warner a needed boost. He got an invite to try out with the St. Louis Rams for their off-season camp, and shortly after, he was sent out for development in Europe. That's right, Europe. NFL Europe at the time acted as a minor league compared to the NFL to help potential pros hone their skills overseas. In Warner's situation, he got assigned to the Amsterdam Admirals. Warner tore Europe apart. He led the league in passing yards and touchdowns, a stint good enough to not have to renew his visa, since the Rams came calling for him to be a backup to start the 1998 season. Finally, it was Warner's time to shine. Well, not yet. He found himself as a third stringer again, a familiar situation for him, dating back to his college days. But one year later, in 1999, Warner had his big break. And this break was indeed big. After Trent Green got injured in preseason, Warner was called upon to be the Rams' new starting QB, despite Dick Vermeil having never seen him play in the first string offense. In the end though, it didn't matter, since Warner had the season of a lifetime, throwing over 4,000 yards, 41 touchdowns, winning all these awards, while leading the Rams to Super Bowl glory and a Super Bowl MVP to go with it. And we're world champions, how about the Rams? Not bad for someone who was stocking shelves four years earlier. The rest is history with Warner. He made two more Super Bowl appearances, one with the Rams, the other with the Cardinals. And although both of them didn't lead to victory, his NFL legacy remains where it began. A fresh face thrown into the line of duty at St. Louis, but making the most of the long-awaited opportunity. It's perhaps the greatest underdog story of all time, but if you can think of a better one, let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe.